flashed across the medical horizon. Dimethyl sulfoxide. It was touted as a pain reliever, which would also work miracles on burns, on acne, even on spinal cord injuries, a kind of jack-of-all-trades among drugs. The medical literature was full of stories about it, some of it pro-DMSO, but much of it con, skeptical, even derisive. The Journal of the American Medical Association editorialized against it, and the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, refused to okay it for general use, said it had never been proved effective. Nonetheless, two states, Oregon and Florida, have legalized it for prescription. And the black market in DMSO has become nationwide. That's how many Americans get it. Meantime, the puzzling story of DMSO continues. It is largely fueled by the efforts of one man, Dr. Stanley Jacob, an associate professor of surgery at the University of Oregon. For 15 years, this man, some would say this zealot, has been pushing DMSO because he believes so deeply, despite the doubters, in what DMSO can do. Dr. Jacob, isn't a drug that has so many alleged uses, from arthritis to tennis elbow, from burns to spinal cord injuries, from mental retardation to baldness, isn't a drug like that automatically suspect? No question. And I think that that's one of the reasons it's having problems. And if I had to do all over again, maybe the major mistake that I made, Mike, in the beginning was to tell it the way it was. I think if I would have said it was good for a sprained ankle, but only if the ankle sprain were on the left side, DMSO maybe might be approved today. Because its use is legal in Oregon, patients make the journey to Dr. Jacob's office there almost as if it were a domestic Lourdes. As we've seen, Dr. Jacob treats some of his patients topically for their bruises, their aches and pains. But some others of his patients, some of the most desperate, are young people left paralyzed from auto and motorcycle accidents. These he gives DMSO intravenously to relieve the pressure on their damaged brains, to reduce the swelling in the brain or spinal cord. And sometimes, apparently, he gets dramatic results. I took the swelling out of the spine, and they told my husband on the phone that I would uh, probably be in a chair. I'm paralyzed for the rest of my life. And um, so we're really excited with the results. Another Oregonian transplanted to Georgia swears by DMSO. June Jones is second string quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Time was, he says, he could hardly raise his arm to throw a football. He says he'd be out of the game without DMSO. My problem is in my shoulder, so the simple thing for me to do is I just put this on like this. Just that much, about an inch worth. I put about an inch worth and I'll rub it, rub it all around the area. And I'll just leave it sit. Sometimes I put on a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. And I'll just let it sit like that for, oh, anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. And, uh... Boy, it smells yeah, already. It, in fact, in about, well, maybe in about five minutes, I'll be able to taste it. That's one small, special characteristic of DMSO. It smells like garlic and tastes like oysters. But if you took a big whack during the game, let's mm -hmm. say, and it was black and blue, you'd rub it on. Oh, yeah. I did this more when I, when I played basketball in the offseason. Sometimes you get kneed in a, in a charlie horse. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, those things are painful for days. Right. I put it on right after, and I may not have any pain the next day at all. Jones says several of his teammates use it, too, but they wouldn't talk about it in public because talk of any drug, especially an illegal drug, is verboten in the NFL. In our business, availability is the most important thing. In other words, if a guy gets hurt, he's, he could lose his job. So when someone comes to me and asks for me for it, I give it to him. And whether I'm legally okay to do that or not, I really don't care the repercussions because I know I'm going to help somebody. Perhaps more typical of the legions who depend on DMSO are those who suffer chronic pain. Emily Rudick suffered searing, unrelenting pain from arthritis for years. And she could find no relief, she says, until DMSO. She'd no longer be playing the piano without it, she told us. I have some very badly narrowed fingers from arthritis, and the DMSO eases the arthritis right away. It's not a miracle drug. It doesn't really cure it, but it eases it. And it does other things for her, too. I had a fever blister on my lip. I used DMSO three times, and the fever blister went away immediately. I've cut myself in the kitchen, 
and sometimes quite badly, and have used DMSO on it, and the uh, cuts begin to heal right away. How does DMSO work? What does it do inside your body that kills pain and helps healing? Dr. Jacob gave us a capsule understanding. One is that it um, blocks certain types of nerve conduction. These are the fibers which produce pain. Second, it reduces inflammation or swelling. Third, it actually improves blood supply to an area of injury. Fourth, and this could be the key, in the test tube, in certain types of injury, it literally stimulates healing. But is it safe to use? We put that question to Dr. Richard Kraut, head of the Bureau of Drugs of the Food and Drug Administration. How many people have died from using DMSO? How many people that you know have gotten ill from using it? Nobody's died from using uh, DMSO. It, it's, it's a relatively safe drug as, as drugs go. Mm -hmm. it, it causes uh, skin rash where it's put on or at least redness of the skin. It's caused um, hives in a few people, may cause uh, headache, nausea in some people who use it, and it rather routinely uh, imparts a garlic odor to the breath. So it's got side effects that are not entirely pleasant, but it's not been a toxic drug. It's a safe drug, comparatively Some safe comparative, drug, you would yes. say. So we come back to the controversy that began 15 years ago. Dr. Kraut insists that despite these anecdotes, neither Dr. Jacob nor any other scientist has ever really proved that DMSO is effective. They've never proved scientifically that it works for anything other than a rare bladder disease called interstitial cystitis. I think people are, are rooting for the drug, in a sense, rooting for the investigators to come through, give us, some, give us the right kind of evidence that stands up under scientific scrutiny. Well, and that's, that's how simple it is with DMSO. So I put a sampling of apparently credible scientific evidence before Dr. Kraut. Are you familiar with dimethyl sulfoxide in musculoskeletal disorders, Journal of American Medical Association? Yes. Topical pharmacology and toxicology of DMSO, Journal right. of Medical right. Association. Mm -hmm. A double-blind clinical study, DMSO for acute injuries and inflammations, current therapeutic research. Yes. Treatment of erotitis and erosinitis with topical DMSO. An entire book on the subject of dimethyl sulfoxide by D. Martin and H. G. Hawthorne. So it's not as though this is some quack remedy that a few people have used and swear by. There is a considerable body of scientific investigation undertaken. That's right. With some very key holes in that body of evidence. And that, and those key holes are? Controlled trials demonstrating that it really works for some of the claims that it's, uh, um, that it's touted for. But controlled trials with DMSO are difficult because that would involve something called double-blind tests, where neither patient nor investigator knows who is getting a drug, who is getting a placebo. And that can't be done with DMSO because the smell of the drug gives it away. What the FDA says is needed is proper testing. And that, for instance, is to treat comparable groups of patients with and without the drug over a long enough time to evaluate its consequences, good or bad. And this, say the doubters in the medical establishment, has just not been done with DMSO. The National Academy of Sciences, you know, looked over a lot of the work that has been published about DMSO, right? Yes, they did. And the National Academy of Sciences Committee said, in effect, that only a few were scientifically sound that most of the DMSO studies have been inadequately set up and carried out. I don't agree with that conclusion because um, um, I personally have published um, several dozen articles on DMSO and I've been associated with two New York Academy of Sciences symposia. There was no one on that committee, Mike, who had actually ever treated uh, a patient with DMSO, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think that that makes a difference. This young mother, Sandy Sherrick of Riverside, California, suffered severe whiplash and nerve damage in an automobile accident two years ago. When we first met her last November, she was in agony. No painkiller, no therapy, no doctor, it seemed, could help. Oh, the pain was extremely bad. I was to the point where I cried, 
continuously. I did not cook meals. I did not clean. I barely got myself dressed. And this went on for how long? Months. They finally got to the point where they just told me, you're going to have to live with it. The weather's going to affect you, and you're just simply going to have to live with it. Then she heard about DMSO. And as a last resort, Sandy Sherrick, as you can see, still very much in pain, flew to Portland, Oregon to be treated by Dr. Jacob. We went with her. She received her first dosages intravenous. This will run in about an hour, an hour and a half, Sandy. I can taste it. You can taste it? Yes. Ready? Ready? Don't be too disappointed. Yes. Ready? Don't be too disappointed if after the first one you're not, you're not significantly improved. Okay? Okay? Let's just see what happens. 24 hours later, there was no real improvement. Besides, she had become nauseous from the treatment. I bent it to one side. I bent to the other. Now, do you have any more mobility or about the same mobility? I think about the same. By the third day, she was feeling a little better. You began to see it in her face. Well, I didn't have to take any more medicine. How long has it been since you haven't had to take medicine? Over two years. Before she left for home, Dr. Jacob showed her where and how to apply DMSO topically to her neck and back. Now, when you put it on, don't rub it too hard. You just have to apply it to the skin, and it goes in. Let it dry over 20 minutes to a half an hour. It won't be totally dry, but anything left, uh, you can just uh, wipe off. That was last November. This is Sandy Sherrick two months later back at her Riverside, California home. Oh, the pain's gone. The pain is totally, completely gone from you, my neck. You're serious? I'm telling the truth, the honest to God truth. You can do anything? Can you do housework? Yes, I can. Drive a car? Yes. Lift stuff? I have not found anything I can't do. We asked Dr. Jacob to come on down, take another look at you, and to talk to you and us together, okay? Okay. Now, could you bend your head to the left side? Any discomfort? None. Okay, now how about to the right side? Any discomfort? No. Sandy, if you had done this three months ago, four months ago, what would have happened? I would have been in pain. He wouldn't have been able to touch me. When a woman has been in pain for two years, and has an injection of, or topical application of, DMSO, and suddenly a miracle happens. When a quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons has been using it off and on for years and says, I swear by, I'm telling you, my arm is better. I throw faster, straighter, better. When you get testimonial after testimonial, I ask you, what's wrong with those testimonials? Nothing's wrong with them. They may be right, but they don't get the the, they don't provide the scientific evidence that's necessary for acceptance by um, scientists. It's not just the FDA that's skeptical, not just the medical establishment. The drug companies don't have much enthusiasm for DMSO either. Why? Jacob and others say it's because DMSO is a common chemical solvent that can be manufactured for four dollars a quart, on which no drug company can get an exclusive patent, Therefore, there is no big financial return available. Did an executive of a major drug company really tell you, Dr. Jacob, I don't care if it, DMSO, is the major drug of our century, and we all know it is, it isn't worth it to us? I was told that if DMSO were approved, it would be competitive, and, and they didn't hold the patents. Yes, I was told that. And you will not tell us? I, I would not tell you the, the name of the drug company or the individual. Why? It's the only question I will not... Uh, I will not answer. I'll answer any other question. I think it's a fact of life that um, drug companies are not going to invest in something unless they think there's some financial return. But we come back to the main reason for the FDA's objection to DMSO, that a story like Sandy Sherrick's doesn't take the place of a scientific test. Well, that's fine. I can understand their feeling, but they've got to be able to look at the test results and take me as an individual. I have no reason to say it does work or it doesn't. All I can say is what it's done for me personally. It worked for me. Two footnotes. 
DMSO is now available for treatment of assorted ailments in Western Europe, the Soviet Union, Japan, and Latin America. And tomorrow morning in Washington, the House Committee on Aging begins an inquiry into why DMSO is not available to all Americans for any appropriate ailment, including plain and simple pain.